Told them both. I thought a dude did some great things. How about those blocks? Well, just stay in front of people. He's going to block it. He's got a knack for that. But they're getting beat on straight line drives. They're leaving their feet, and here comes a guy. The problem with that is you're going to get Oscar in foul trouble because you're not keeping that man in front of you. But want to play those guys. Uh, I thought Ugana, uh, Lance was sick, uh, would have played if we needed him. Um, but he, uh, you know, so that's why we did what we did. But we played, you know, we, we, we worked one day on what I would call a sequence. You fly up and down the court, you fly and it's not there. And, and let me just say, because as a coach, I talk about the sequence, which I've done, but I haven't, like, said this is, and I put the sequence on the board, and I looked at one of the guys, and I said, tell me what the sequence is. He didn't know, which tells you that's why we played a couple games where if it wasn't there, no one moved the ball, we held it, shot bad shots, uh, shots that you can't rebound, quick threes that were contested. So we're going to spend time um, really working on when you play a good team, you're not just running them out of the gym, but you're going to fly to try. What happens next? If they ball moves, what's the last thing that happens with 10 seconds on the clock? How do you get a good shot now? So we're working on it. Today, again, we, there were some execution breakdowns again. I mean... I said, okay, we're going to run this. Do you know it? Two guys said no. We ran a play, and the guy didn't go where he was supposed to. Another guy didn't cut off. We got work to do. But I like what I saw, assist to turnovers. I like what I saw, um, figuring out for the first time how we post Oscar, stuff that we're, we're trying to do. I like Dugana, um, but he gets tired. Chris got tired. I told him, sub yourself. Don't stay in there and get beat on the dribble twice. Sub yourself. Yes. You mentioned the lack of practice time as far as the team kind of being discombobulated. What, I guess what was different about pre-Bahamas practices to what would have happened in All that October? stuff we, we were doing, we, it was team camaraderie. So we were running two things. That was it. And everything was about, all right, let's get in shape. Let's uh, fly up and down the court. Let's work on spacing. But the execution, we didn't, none of the stuff that we're running now, we really ran down there. That's the Bahamas trip is to go play competition. Who will fight in those situations? Who's not afraid to make shots when the lights are on? And let's get together and have a ball and get to know one another. And that's what the Bahamas trip is. Um, but like I said, when, when we weren't together with Oscar and Severe and Damien, that's why I kept saying it's going to take us a little time. You know, I'm not happy that we lost two games. I want to win every game I coach, um, especially one. And you know, I've talked to both Tom and Mark were friends. You know, we gave one away. We did. The other one I knew would have been hard for us to win. But I thought we would battle and it would come down to, to be truthful, an execution play that they would make that we couldn't make. But it, when it started the way it started and we couldn't make a shot, it got ugly. But today, uh, again, like North, North Florida, uh, Matt, they went to Duquesne and should have won the game. A floater at the buzzer, they got beat by one. They went to Washington and played them to an eight-point game. Gonzaga got them pretty good, and we got them pretty good. They beat South Carolina State. Their league is really good, but Matt is a terrific coach. Plus, he's from Pittsburgh. I don't know if you heard him say yins. He said yins like three times. I said, you can't say that outside the city limits. Yes. 
Is, given what you just said there about not running a ton of stuff in the Bahamas and with the injuries that occurred, did you forecast any kind of the issues in terms of understanding what you guys wanted to run, not being able to execute in certain game situations, entering some of those bigger games you've already played? I Again, here's what happens. You ask them the question, and they can't answer it. And that means, as a teacher, you haven't done your job. They need to be able to answer the question. I even put it on the board and said, what is it? And one, one guy, but I stood in front of it. So the guy was trying to look around me so he could answer it. So, you know, now we're talking about it every day. I'm asking them questions. What are we supposed to do? Because you think they know. And when you think they know something, you're always wrong. And... Uh, you know, now, here's the other thing that's happening. When people are playing two and three man games and they bring people together, the same two guys on my team, when they're in those, get scored on. It might not be them, it'll be the other guy. Someone's getting scored on. So now we know. We know that beat, getting beat on the bounce. If you want to play, you can't just get beat on straight line drives where your man's driving down the lane or baseline. You can't if you want to play, especially in the high-level games, which our league, every game will be high-level, and we still got a bunch left to play. But it, you have to play the kind of games we're playing to find out what we're going to have to work on. It's hard when you're winning by 30 or 40, 20, it's hard because you get intoxicated like we'll be all right. Every time we broke down against Michigan State and Gonzaga, they scored. Every time. That's what good teams do. And that's why you've got to play a good team and let them do that so you can get with your team, show them on tape, and say you're not beating anybody that's good if we don't get this right. I, look, here's the biggest thing. I love this group. They're great teammates. Um, there's still some guys unsure of themselves. Most of them have a ways to go. Um, some of them want to play a different way than the way this team needs them to play. And I just got to demand you, you're going to play it the right way. But it's a good group. And uh, like I said the last time, you know, we, we're, we're, gonna, we're a work in progress. We're going to work every day. We got some time. And, and by the way, you know, Bellarmine, um, they're good. I mean, they're really good. And so we, we got our hands full, and then we leave for London. And we got some time. Tomorrow we'll probably do some things for Thanksgiving. The, the team and some of their families will be at the house, but probably go to the Salvation Army and serve and do some stuff, maybe stop by the Hope House later that night. Uh, with my family and do some stuff. So, and I and I would say, you know, for all of us, you just think that, you know, one, I have a child that was born on Thanksgiving Day, Megan, whose birthday uh, was today. Um, and the things that have happened for me and my family, I'm thankful. How about the opportunity to coach here and be a part of what this goes on and be here for our fans, who are the greatest. Um, they're engaged, you know, and they're, and I get a chance to do that. So I'm thankful for all that too. And I would tell everybody, if anybody's you're writing this or you're listening, reach out to somebody who you know may be by themselves. Invite them to your house. Maybe somebody that's older, maybe a widow. Um, maybe somebody that's moved to town and they're here by themselves, invite them to the house. Um, bring them food and spend some time with them. I mean, it's a, it's a great time. And I think um, for all of us, um, that's why we do stuff at Thanksgiving. I want these kids to feel it, what it is, and the appreciation of people. Um, and only by the grace of God, we're not here trying to eat, only by the grace of God. I mean, I didn't grow up in an Ivy League, you know. I mean, how did I bust through and do this? By, by the grace of God. So, um, you know, seeing all this stuff, um, knowing, 
You, you know, and I'll just say one thing. Every year, I'm hoping it's going to be easy. And at some point, it is not easy. This stuff is really hard. Thanksgiving's coming at a great time. Be thankful. Yeah, it's hard. If it were easy, everybody do it. It's hard. So, um, looking forward to tomorrow to be with the kids and do some of the stuff we're going to do. And, and then we start Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And it is, we got to get this right. And I thought we did some good things defensively today. You know, we did. Yes. Hey, uh, John, when, when Matt was in here, he really praised the way that you guys passed the ball. But I wanted to specifically ask about Oscar. With, with so much of the attention on his rebounding, and rightly so, as well as the scoring, do you, do you think his ability as a passer gets overlooked? Um, well, he's gotten better. If you remember, he wasn't a real good passer a year ago, especially early in the year. Um, but to have five assists and one turnover and three steals, that's a big game now. We have a belt that we give out after wins, the most impactful player. Who impacted the game? The staff gets it, and it's a big, shiny belt. Maybe they'll show you. Um, he got it today. He was the most impactful, not because of points and rebounds, because of what you said. He had five assists. He had three blocks or three steals and two blocks. That's impacting the game. And uh, he'll have the belt until the next win. You don't get no belts on a loss. But we uh, maybe uh, if he didn't take it already, because he, he wore it. Like he's wearing, wearing it around the locker room. Yes. He wore it to the radio. Ah, uh, jeez. John, early in the second half, looked like CJ may have stepped awkward, like tweaked his hamstring or something. He never came he back said it in. Was, yeah, I did because I got scared. And, and Lance being sick, I said, if we don't need you just because, you know, this thing, this next week of practice to get us right is going to be vital. With him, it was a cramp. And he says, even when I feel it cramp up, I get scared. So he was in there, and I walked in. I said, are you all right? He said, yeah, I'm good, but I got scared, which understanding. And uh, uh, Kaysen, I think, hit knees. Um, he just said, get me out. But they were, they were all pretty good. What have you seen defensively from Antonio since he's gotten here to, to today? And I guess what else does he need to do to, to continue he working? To, there? He needs to talk more. He needs you to be more engaged in what's happening not just playing his man. He does a pretty good job of playing his man. Now we got to take this to another level and say the way you're playing offensively, some of the, he started messing with the ball, can be cured. You mess with the ball, take you out. Just pass it, shoot it, score it. If you have a move to make, that's fine. But when he gets in groups of twos and threes, he now is worried about his man, and that's when you get beat by all the other stuff. Because basically you're in a zone. I'm taking this out. You take that that way. The, you know, and, and he's learning. But I'll tell you what, you know, he's a good player. He's a good player. So is CJ. I mean, you, one of them comes off the bench. I just, you know, I didn't like the defensive look to start the game and maybe even at Michigan State, even though I thought we did some good stuff. All right, let me go do this radio show. <laughs>